Here we're gonna apply the notion of an integral of a differential m form on Rn to understand the change of variables formula in two variables a little bit more deeply. So let's first recall some background information. So let's say we've got omega, which is a differential m form on Rn. That means omega can be written in this form. So we have the sum over these multi-indices i, f sub i, dx i where this capital I is an increasing sequence of numbers, I sub one up to I sub M, and those numbers are between one and N. And then we have phi, which goes from D to RN. D is a subset of RM. It is one-to-one -one and smooth, and the image of D is S. So that's parametrizing an M-dimensional hypersurface in RN. So this is the kind of picture we have. Over here is our RM space, and over here is our Rn space. So it's taking this region D and folding it into this M dimensional region in a higher dimensional space. And finally, earlier we argued that the integral of this differential M form over S should be this M fold integral over D of omega with its two step evaluation first on the hypersurface defined by phi and then at all of the tangent vectors to the hypersurface. So that's what we mean by this notation here. And then this is just the standard M volume differential element for that multi-integral. And finally, we recall that the elementary M form, dxi1 wedge all the way up to dxim, has an action on M different vectors from Rn. We'll call them V upper one up to V upper M. And that gives us an output of a number. And that number is the determinant formed by these vectors V1 to Vm and the I1 through Im components. So the first row is made up by the first vector with its I1 up to Im components. The second row will be the second vector, its I1 to Im components, and so on and so forth. So like I said, our goal is to look a little bit more deeply into the change of variables formula for double integrals. So we'll do that by integrating this differential two form omega, which is f of x, y, dx, wedge, dy, over this region d of the plane two different ways. First with this trivial parameterization, which is really just taking a point x, y to a point x, y. And then with another parameterization, which is defined by this function phi, which is mapping this region here in the uv plane called d prime to our goal region over here d. And that has x, uv, and y, uv as the component functions. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what we get for this one. So here we're doing the integral over d of omega. So notice that's going to be the double integral over d of omega evaluated at this identity thing. And then furthermore, evaluated at the derivative of this identity with respect to x, and then the derivative of this identity with respect to y. And then we have dA. That's just our normal differential area component. So notice what that's going to give us is the double integral over d. This evaluation here tells us we put the output of this identity function into our function f, but that doesn't do anything in this case. We just replace x with x and y with y, so we just still have f of x, y. And then we need our dx wedge dy acting on these two vectors that are built by taking the partial derivatives of the identity function with respect to x and with respect to y. So notice with respect to x, that will give us the vector 1, 0. I'm just writing that column y so we have a bit more space. And then with respect to y, that'll give us just give us 0, 1. Great. And then we have dA. That's just our normal two volume element. Okay, great. But now notice that this two form acting on these two vectors just causes us to take the determinant of the matrix formed by those two vectors. And so the determinant of the matrix formed by those vectors is just one because that's the identity matrix. So we get f of x, y, dA. In other words, the double integral of the function f of x, y over this region d. Now we'll do it again with our other parameterization. So we're integrating the two form omega over d. So that means in this case, it's going to turn into a double integral over d prime because that's the region parameterizing d in this case. And then we have omega evaluated at phi of uv. 
and then further evaluated at the partial of phi with respect to u and the partial of phi with respect to v. And then finally, a dA component. I'm going to put a prime here because we want to make it look a little bit different than that, but it's still a standard double integral component. Okay, great. But now let's see what that tells us to do. We're going to get the double integral over d prime. And this subscript down here tells us to plug in x u v everywhere we see x and y u v everywhere we see y. So that's going to give us f evaluated at x u v comma y u v. So that changes that to a function of u and v. And then we have our elementary two form again. So dx wedge dy. But now these two vectors are formed by taking the derivatives of our parameterization. So the two vectors that we have are partial x, partial u, and partial y, partial u. So that'll be the d phi du thing. And then the next one will be a partial x, partial v, partial y, partial v. That'll be the d phi d v thing. And then we have d a prime again. But then this elementary differential, but then this elementary two form acting on those two vectors tells us to take the determinant of the associated matrix. So in the end, we'll get the double integral over d prime of f evaluated at x u v, y u v, and then the determinant of the partial of x with respect to u, the partial of y with respect to u, the partial of x with respect to v the partial of y with respect to v, and then our differential area component dA prime. But now if we compare, notice that we have this integral right here is equal to this integral right here, but that's exactly the change of variables formula for double integrals from calculus two. And we've linked each of those through the integral of this differential two form on R2 with different parameterizations. Okay, so now that we've seen that, let's go ahead and clean up the board and then we'll do an example. For our example, we're gonna look at the double integral of the function x squared plus y squared dA over the region D, which is defined by the disk with radius two. In other words, all points x, y, where x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to four, so I've drawn that like this. So we're gonna do this by envisioning this double integral as an integral of a two form and then reparameterize the region. So notice this is going to be the same thing as the integral of the two form omega over d where omega is equal to x squared plus y squared dx wedge dy. And now all we need to do is reparameterize that d and we can do that by defining this function phi from 0 to cross 0 to pi into d, where phi has variables r and theta, and that is given by r cosine theta, r sine theta. So this shouldn't be a big surprise that we're being inspired by polar coordinates here. Okay, great. And now let's see what we get. So now using this parameterization to evaluate this integral of a two form, we get this is going to be the double integral over 0, 2 and 0, 2 pi. And then we have omega evaluated at phi of r theta and then further evaluated at d phi dr and d phi d theta. And then we have dr d theta. Great. And now we just have to recall what that means. So this means we're going to have the integral from 0 to 2, the integral from 0 to 2 pi. First evaluating omega at phi of r theta. That means everywhere we see x, we're going to plug in r cosine theta. Everywhere we see y, we're going to plug in r sine theta. But it's pretty easy to see that by the Pythagorean identity for the trig functions, that's just going to give us r squared. So I'll just underline that in yellow to see exactly where that came from, okay? And then we have our elementary two form, dx wedge dy, that needs to be evaluated at these two vector fields defined by the derivative of phi at r and theta. So notice the derivative of phi at r will give us the vector cosine theta, sine theta, and then the derivative of phi at theta will give us minus r sine theta and then r cosine theta. 
and then we have dr d theta. So now since we're running out of room, I'll bring that up here and then we'll finish it off. On the last board, we took our double integral of our function x squared plus y squared over our region d, where that was defined by all x, y, where x squared plus y squared are less than or equal to four, and we re-envisioned that as an integral of a two-form omega over a region d, the same region, and then we reparametrize this region of the plane using polar coordinates, and then that ended up being equal to this iterated integral over 0, 2, 0, 2 pi of r squared. Now we have this elementary two form, dx wedge dy, evaluating on these two vectors. And then our order of integration is d theta dr. So actually on the last board I had dr d theta, so that was a bit of a typo. Okay, so now let's recall that if we take this elementary two form, dx wedge dy, and evaluate it at those two two-dimensional vectors, that's just taking the determinant of the two by two matrix formed by those two vectors. So in other words, we have the integral from zero to two, and then the integral from zero to two pi of r squared, and now the determinant of the matrix formed by these two. So here we're gonna have uh, cosine theta, sine theta, and then minus r sine theta, r cosine theta. And you might say, well, do I take those vectors to be the rows and the columns? But actually it doesn't matter because what you end up doing is taking the transpose of the matrix if you make the other choice. But the determinant of the transpose is the same thing as the determinant of the original matrix. So like I said, it makes no difference. And then we have uh, d phi, sorry, d theta dr. Okay, so now all we have to do is take the determinant of this matrix so we're gonna have r times cosine squared theta minus a negative r times sine squared theta. So that's gonna be plus r times sine squared theta. So that's just gonna give us r. So that's just gonna leave us with the integral from zero to two and then the integral from zero to two pi of r cubed. We've got r squared times r and then d theta dr. Now that we have a pretty simple double integral, we can break this into two single integrals because our integrand is a function of r times a function of theta. The function of theta is just the trivial constant function one. So this is the integral from zero to two pi d theta and then zero to two of r cubed dr. Great. So that's gonna give us two pi for this theta integral, and then we're gonna have times one over four r to the fourth evaluated from zero to two. That is gonna be our r integral. Okay, so notice if we plug two in there, we have two to the fourth power, so that's 16, divided by four, so that's four times two pi, so that's gonna be eight pi. And that's our final answer. And so the takeaway here is that these change of variables formula, so in the past video we looked at the one variable change of variables formula, which is essentially u substitution, and this change of variables for double integrals, and as you could imagine, the change of variables for triple integrals can be reimagined as integrating the same differential one, two, or three form, just with a different parameterization for that region of integration. Okay. And that's a good place to stop.